السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم افتح لنا فتح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصل لهم على سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين. The uh, the topic that uh, I wanted to talk about today uh, for me it's a very serious topic because in many uh, places in fact all over the globe now we are living in a time where uh, the the devil has has tools that he's never had before ever uh, for the first time in human history uh, you can backbite when you're alone because you have a cell phone and you can just call somebody up and start backbite. It used to be if you were alone, you couldn't backbite or do namima or do these things. But now you can backbite on your chat room. Uh, you could text and backbite. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ talked about the dangers of ghiba because much of what goes on now on the internet is really ghiba. Uh, when you leave these, uh, these so somebody puts something up on the internet and then all these people have to say these terrible things uh, about them. Whether they deserve them or not. They just feel compelled. To, and it's all done with anonymity because they're cowards. People won't come and say it to your face, but they're cowards. So they'll do it with anonymity, but the angels know who they are. You can be killer 23 on the internet, but, but the angels know that you're Abdullah, the son of Abdullah, and they'll write that down. So you can't get away with it. There's no anonymity in the unseen world. The other aspect is the television and films and music. One of the interesting things about Islam is the tension that the ulama had with music. Nobody can make a blanket statement that it's mujma uh, alayh. If you read Shawkani and Nail al-Awtar, he has a section on this and, and talks about the khilaf that existed about music. Imam al-Ghazali, Abd al-Ghani al and other great scholars have sections about sama' uh, which is a sacred type of music uh, that they thought was a good thing and permissible. But the ulama were very wary of music because they understood how powerful music is and, and how seductive it is and the effects that it has on the soul. This actually goes back to the ancient Greeks who Plato in the Republic, Socrates uh, is the voice that he uses, but Plato in the Republic actually outlaws certain types of music in the Republic because they were so harmful to the soul. And, and ethos theory is the theory of the effect that music has. In, in fact, Al-Farabi, who wrote Kitab uh, Al-Musiq Al-Kabir, the big book of music, which I have in my library. It's a huge book, very heavy. Uh, it's one of the earliest works, serious works, on the science of music. Al-Farabi was known for being able to make people laugh, cry, become sleepy or become excited based on maqams that he would play on the oud. He could literally make people cry. And this is uh, well recorded. And this is what you find when people go to, to concerts. They get very agitated. They have to move. They don't know why, but they have to move. They can't stop moving because the music is having an effect on them. There's demonic effects that sounds have, and then there's angelic effects that sounds have. And so the ulama were very concerned about the demonic effects of sound. And they understood that one of the things that the demons have always used is music to lure people away. In fact, in the hadith about Dawood who sang, 
the Psalms. He had a beautiful voice and he sang, which is musical, but it was angelic. Shaitan got a little band together and he put it on the side of the road and the people on their way to hear Dawood would stop and listen to the band of Shaitan and they would forget about Dawood. And so this was the tension that the ulama had and it's very important that that tension exists because nobody can make a blanket statement that music is entirely haram and nobody can make a blanket statement that it's halal. And so that tension is there so that Muslims never go too far into that thing. Because now you see in the West, people listen to music all the time. They have no, they're always plugged in. They get in their car, they turn on the music. They, they walk, they put in their, their earphones and they listen to their music and people have long playlists. They spend a lot of money on these things. And so they're lost. They don't have free time to think anymore because their lives are filled with sound. So the demons have immense tools that they've never had before. And they're using them very effectively. And we're, unfortunately, the people of Haq are not using them effectively at all. And Allah says, Aqibu bi mithli ma bi. Fight with the tools that you're being fought with. The jihad of this age is between the ears. The jihad of this age is between the ears. Because this is the battlefield is the mind of human beings, and by that, by extension, the heart. So what I want to look, I want to begin with a hadith, which is muttafaqun alayh, in, in the mustarah of the people of hadith. It means that both Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim relate this hadith in their books. They relate it in a section called Bab al-Fitan. The fitan, fitna, in Arabic is a very intriguing word, uh, because one of the meanings of it is intriguing. Right? In other words, it pulls you in. So a fitna, the Arabs, I don't know why, but the Arabs call some of their daughters, they call them Fatina, which means she's a fitna. She's somebody that causes fitna. Right? In other words, she's attractive or seductive. She's, you're attracted to her. So fitna is something attractive about it. People like fitna. I'll give you an example. You have Muslims that don't do anything. They sit around, they watch TV, they, maybe they go to the masjid. Some, but when a fitna happens, suddenly they become so active. And they're on the phone, and we have to do something about this. And, and they really get active because fitna excites people. There's something compelling about it. And this is why in the Sahih al-Bukhari, when fitna happened, uh, one of the greats, uh, and this is the beauty of the Sahaba because they were, they were t one of the many beautiful things about them. They knew that the Prophet ﷺ loved poetry. The Prophet loved good poetry. Uh, he particularly liked Ibn Abi Sult, who was one of the, metaf he was one of the spiritual poets of the Jahili Arabs. He liked Labid and others. And in Al-Bukhari, he quotes a poet. The Prophet himself never, uh, used poetry uh, himself, but he listened to it and he enjoyed listening to it at times. And he said, Inna min shi'ri la hikmah. In shi'r is wisdom. When the fitness used to come, the Sahaba said, Ibn Uyayna relates this hadith in Al-Bukhari, that they used, kanu yatamathaluna bi imr al-qais. They would re remember the words of Imr al-Qais. Al-harbu awru ma takunu fatiyyatan tas'a bi zinatiha li kulli jahuli. When war first shows up, it's like a decked out woman seducing every ignoramus. That's from Imr al-Qais. When war first shows up, it's a seductive woman who, who's decked out with her zina. And the young men, they get excited and they run. Until the conflagration happens. And suddenly you're engulfed in the flames of war. It becomes an old hag who's lost her husband. Shamta'a yunkaru launuha wa taghayyarat. Makruhatan nishammi wa taqbili. Ugly, foul smelling, 
Nobody wants to kiss or hug her. This is the, what they used to quote when war started to remind them that war looks good until you're actually in it. And then you see that war is hell. And this is why the Prophet said, لَا تَتَمَنَّوا لِقَاءَ الْعَدُوْ Sahih al-Bukhari Do not desire to go to war. It's a disease in the heart. But he said, if you're forced to, فَثْبُتُوا be brave. But it should not, it's a sickness in the heart to want to go and kill other people. So this chapter is in the chapter of fitna, which also means civil strife. الْفِتْنَةُ to أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْرِ Fitna is worse than, than killing. Here it means persecution. So it can mean persecution. It can mean uh, civil strife. Like when you have w civil wars, it's called fitna. It can also mean confusion. So it has many meanings. But all of our muhaddithun had a chapter called Bab al-Fitan. In the Bab al-Fitan, it's mutabakun alay tu'rad al-fitan wa ala al-qulubi kal hasir. The end of time won't come until the fitan are shown to the hearts like a mat. Udan udan. Vertical and horizontal. And I'll get into this later, but I want to start with this. فَأَيُّ قَلْبٍ أُشْرِبَهَا Any heart that drinks it in, but the Prophet ﷺ used, if, if, if the Sahaba got it right, sometimes they didn't, but if the Sahaba got it right, the Prophet ﷺ used a passive form. It's called مَبْنِي لِلْمَجْهُولِ أُشْرِبَهَا the, 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 the heart is passively taking in these fitan. Then he said, Nukita fihi nuktatun sauda. A black dot will appear in the heart. This is spiritual. It's, it's a metaphysical meaning. It's a, you, if you open the heart, you're not going to see a black dot. But there in the spiritual realm, in the unseen realm, a black dot appears. And then he said, Wa ayu qalbin ankaraha nukita fihi nuktatun bayda. And any heart that rejects it, a white dot will emerge in the heart. In other words, the beginning of spiritual growth. So the other one is the beginning of darkness, of demonic growth. And then this one is the beginning of spiritual growth. And then he said, <laughs> Until the hearts are two types only. And then he said, a white heart that's like pure water. It's pure. The fitna won't harm it as long as the heavens and the earth are there. And then he said, Black, but it goes little by little it becomes black. Murbad irbad in Arabic means to change color shay'an fa shay'an. Taghayyar al shay'an fa shay'an. It means to change over time. And this is important because this is how the, the, the darkness gets in the heart and it grows until it's completely black. Kalkuz mujakhiyan. Like a container that can't carry anything. Everything spills out. In other words, goodness spills out of it. It won't contain anything. And then he said, لا يعرف معروفا It won't know what's good. ولا ينكر منكرا إلا ما أشرب من هواه It won't know good and it won't reject evil. So it won't recognize good and it won't reject evil. It becomes relativistic, nihilistic. Everything is relative. It takes in everything إلا ما أشرب من هواه Only it only sees what it has passively taken from its hawa. And so what I want to do, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is called the devil's traps. And I want to look at these things. Every Muslim begins by reciting the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim why would you begin that when you recite the Qur'an? Because the Qur'an 
you will go astray with the Quran if the devil is influencing you. You will go astray with the Quran if the devil is influencing you. Every sect in Islam went astray based on verses in the Quran that they misinterpreted. There is no sect in the history of Islam that didn't use the Quran as proofs for its deviation. And this is because shaitan, Ahmed Zarruq, in his qawaid says, no haqiqah, no reality comes into the world except it's met with its opposite. Some demonic opposite of that thing. So marriage comes into the world, it's met with zina. Clarity of mind comes into the world, it's met with confusion. And then he said, or if that doesn't work, then to pervert the reality and deviate the reality from its intended purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tattabi'u khutuwaat shaytan or khatawaat shaytan. Don't follow the progress of shaytan. You see, shaytan will lead you by istidraj. He will take you step by step. This is the irbad. That you go shay'an fashay'an. He doesn't come with all his khupth all at once. He comes slowly. I once asked my father, do you think people sign a devil's contract with a piece of paper? He said, no, it's a long series of negotiations. You compromise your values. Like George Bernard Shaw, when he, uh, they say that he met a woman and he asked if she would go back to his hotel with him for a million quid a million pound and she said yes and then he said what about 20 quid and she slapped him and said what kind of woman do you think I am he said we've already determined that now we're haggling <laughs> once you compromise your principles then that that's it so you just do it slowly the first time you don't take a bribe but then you start thinking about it mm, I could use that money then the next time the bribes offered you take it this is how it works. So Allah says, don't follow the khutawat shaitan وَمَنْ يَتِبِعْ خُطَوَاتِ shaitan فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ He's commanding you to do foul things, munkari, and things that are naturally rejected by fitra. Your fitra rejects them. وَلَوْلَا فَطُرُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَ مِنْكُمْ and had it not been for Allah's grace and His mercy, there would none of you would have been purified. Because the purpose of your life on earth is tazkiyah. If you follow shaitan, he will corrupt your heart. By rejecting shaitan, you're purifying your heart. And this is tazkiyah. And this is our religion. On that day, nothing will avail the human being. No benefit except the one that comes with a pure heart, with a sound heart, with a wholesome heart. So this is what shaitan wants to do. Is, is do Allah does tazkiyah, purifies whom he pleases, but he purifies those who struggle. Allah will purify those who struggle. So you have to do work. The Prophet said, help me. One man said to him, Ya Rasulullah, intercede for me on the day of judgment. He said, help me by doing a lot of sujood and give me some portion of your night to help me. In other words, you need, you're going to get into Jannah only by the grace of Allah, the Rahmah of Allah. But you also have to work. We believe in, in faith and deeds. We believe in faith and deeds. Even though iman is tasdiq, wa fusura al imanu bit tasdiqi. Iman is, is pure belief, and anyone who simply believes, even if they never did any good in their life, eventually will get out of the hell, according to the hadith in Sahih al Bukhari. But we believe in faith and deeds because faith has burhan. A sadaqatu burhan, charity is a proof of your faith, prayer is a proof of your faith. Now, what I want to look at, first of all, is the media. When people say the media is the problem, 
they're, they're right about most things. If you look, re, re, all of the research that we have indicates that media violence has increased in quantity, but it's also more graphic, more sexual, and more sadistic. This is the khutawat of shaitan. If you watch films from the 1940s, the 1930s, the 1950s, see, you can see it's slow. This is how shaitan gets people. He pulls them step by step. These are his khutawat. You start watching films, they introduce violence. In my country, one of the landmark films was a film called Bonnie and Clyde with... Uh, What's his name? See, people know Warren Beatty. Yeah. There, there's a hadith that in the end of time, the shayateen will, will take forms and they'll, they'll, they'll tell you fictional stories and you'll say, I, I can see his face, but I don't know his name. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari. And there's a website of actors. The website is called, you know their faces, but can't remember their names. That's a hadith. It's amazing. Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so that film was a major change in America in, in cinematography because before that, graphic violence was not permitted. But this film showed blood, gore. Now that film looks tame compared to what they have out. These are the khutawat of shaitan. And shaitan wants violence and sex are his two, these are, because they're very powerful for the human psyche. And these are the two ways that he can really corrupt the heart. I'm, this is from the United States, so I'm using statistics from the U.S., but, but it's all coming to you, unfortunately. So 80% of R-rated movies, right? 70% of restricted video games and 100% of music with explicit content, warning labels, were being marketed to children under 17. So they know what they're doing. These are the minions of shaitan. Whether they're conscious of it or not. They're unconscious. If you say, We believe in freedom of speech. We believe in artistic expression. We're not sowing corruption. No, they're the corruptors. But they're unaware. So many of them are literally minions. By the time the average child in the United States is 18 years old, they will have seen 200,000 acts of violence and 16,000 murders. What do you think this is doing to the psyche? Why do you think America is such a violent country? Seriously, there are other reasons. This is one of the reasons. We have a history of violence in the United States. But our children have been programmed to be violent. Media violence is especially damaging to young children under eight because they cannot easily tell the difference between real life and fantasy. The American Pediatric Association warns that children should not see any television now. Th this is a uh, protocol from a few years back. They shouldn't see any television before the age of three because of the effects they know that it has. That was actually a compromise because the evidence shows that they really shouldn't be seeing any in television while their brains are developing. But these are compromises because the television industry is so powerful. And if you don't think industry has an effect on, on, on medicine, just look at the food pyramid. Because the food pyramid in the United States was changed because of the dairy and meat lobbies. Because they warned people about dairy and meat. So they got it changed. So, Industry, medicine is in service of industry. It's not medicine in service of humanity. It serves industry. They know Scientific America proved that television is a low-grade addiction. People become addicted to television. It's like tea, you know. I mean, I always say, what's the problem with tea? I, I don't feel addicted. I've given it up so many times, right? So those low-grade addictions are real. Tea is a low-grade addiction, but as an inveterate tea drinker, I can tell you it is very hard to give up tea. I was corrupted by the English because I lived in England, and every day they would have tea. I started having tea. Before I knew it, I go back to America where they don't drink tea. They drink coffee, but I wanted tea, right? I'm, I have Irish roots. The English, you know about the English. Malaysia knows. You know, they say monkeys know how to speak the orangutan. They say that they can speak. 
like the orangutan, they speak Malay in the jungle, but they knew that if they spoke, the English would put them to work. <laughs> so they just pretend not to. <laughs> so TV and film. You have so much children's violence. This is a cartoon for children. You know, this is traumatic for kids. Trust me. We ha I have a, a, a person I know who was a, a child psych psychiatrist, and he told me he had so many children that had Disney film trauma. Every single Disney film has a dead mother or a mother who dies in the film. Why do they do that? It's traumatic. They know what they're doing. Disney is an evil empire. And I am not, this is not a joke. Disney is an evil empire. And why does Disney spread this global message out to turn little girls into princesses? We don't want, you know, uh, all you need is one princess in a country. Or maybe, okay, you have nine sultanates, so you have to have more. <laughs> but you don't want a lot of princesses in a country. You want women that will serve, that will work, that will do things. They don't expect everybody to do it for them. And I know your, the, 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 the sultanas here serve and do things. That's true. But the Disney princess is served. And all the children are little warriors. So they have this violent attitude uh, in their um, film. I mean, look at this. You know, it's just unbelievable. Do I have sound? I put it up. Where's the sound? Okay. Hello, Earth. So good to see you. Seeing me. We know you find TV irresistible. And Hulu. Oh, yeah. Now follow me. Below the curtain, to the halubratory, where we make the irresistible, irresistible blur. They killed Kenny! You are correct, sir! And our latest silver bullet, Hulu Plus. Full seasons and full series runs of your favorite shows in your new favorite place. Everywhere. You see, this is your brain on TV. This is your brain on Hulu. So close. And this is your brain. Oh. On Hulu Plus. And this is your brain with a little spring of it. Hulu Plus. That's hot. An evil plot to destroy the world. Enjoy. You know, people think that's a joke. Trust me, that is no joke. That, that, that's Iblis. I mean, the thing about Iblis, he has fun. He really enjoys this show. He enjoys making fun of us, you know, just laughing at us, you know. What are you going to do, give up TV? That's what he says in one of those ads. It's not a joke. Two out of three Hollywood films released in 2001 were rated R. And I'll tell you something about R rating today. Khutawat al-Shaitan. In the 1960s, these films would have been rated X. But this is the khutawat. People have become used to the violence and the sex. And so films that would have gotten an X rating in, in the 1960s are now rated R. And, and, and now PG-13 is what used to have an R rating. This is the average time spent watching television, 5.11 hours in the United States every day. Black Americans, seven, more than seven hours a day. White, five. Hispanic, 4.35 because they're, they're out working, right? And then the Asians, 3.14 because their tiger moms won't let them watch TV. 99% of households that possess at least one TV. I once, my wife can testify this, I once got a call by one of these people doing a, a survey, and he said, how many TVs do you have in the house? And I said, I don't have any. He said, come on. I said, I don't have any. He said, none? I said, I don't have a TV. And then he said, uh, 
you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've never, ever had a call with it where they didn't have a TV. So that was kind of a 2.4 TV sets in the average U.S. household, right? Because some have five, some have one in every room. 56% of Americans who pay for cable TV. 49% say they watch too much TV. Amazing. 34 hours per week over the age of two spent in front of a TV. 24 hours per week, two to 11 spent watching TV. 54% of four to six year olds who when asked to choose between watching TV and spending time with their fathers preferred television. Average American youth, 900 hours in school, 1,200 hours watching TV, right? By the time they get out of high school. It's amazing. And then they wonder why our countries uh, become, you know, one of, I mean, we don't, we don't, in none of the, the indices we lead anymore, right? The U.S. Uh, we already saw this, 200,000, 16,000 number of 30-second TV commercials seen in a year. And you know what they call these? Now an important message from our sponsor. Message in Arabic is risala. This is the real reason they want you to buy and consume their goods, because it's a consumer civilization. Cartoons are very serious. Th this uh, cartoon is was done, it's for adults. The man that does this cartoon, literally, he's an atheist, doesn't believe in anything, makes fun of everything, cynicism, everything's a joke. Kids watch this show. It's a very sophisticated show. This is all about ghosts and, and demons and the occult. The Scooby-Doo has all these occult themes in it. Uh, and then you've got, here's the father of the family, right, Homer Simpson. And there's his relationship with his kid, right? The level of violence during Saturday morning cartoons is higher than the level of violence during prime time. You've got all these cartoons here now, and your kids are growing up on this crap. And you really have to think seriously, garbage in, garbage out. You have to think seriously about what's being done to your children's minds if you're letting them watch TV. There are three to five violent acts per hour in prime time versus 20 to 25 acts of violence on Saturday morning. Children imitate what they see. If you put a kung fu film and you put a, a bunch of eight-year-olds and they watch a kung fu film, by the time the film's done, they're all kicking each other, right? It's a simple fact of life. Music is another area. 2.5 hours per day for teenagers in the United States listening to music. 2.5 hours per day. And as somebody who grew up in America, uh, coming from a musical family, I have so many lyrics that I wish I could sue the people that took that space of my brain. Because I would much rather have other things in there. So I have lyrics from, I'm not going to age myself, but I have lyrics from... You know, and empty lyrics, you know. So, I mean, some of them uh, were interesting, but not very many. Uh, one of them was advers advertising signs uh, convince you to think you're the one that can win what's never been won, that can do what's never been done. Meantime, life goes on outside all around you. So that's a useful little piece of lyric, right? Uh, one in three popular songs now contain explicit references. Khutuwat, you see, songs used to be like, if you go back to the 1960s, I mean the 1940s and 30s, listen to the songs. Don't, but I, I can tell you. They were innocent lyrics, mostly innocent lyrics. Some of them had subtle things, but people couldn't work them out unless they were sophisticated. But most of them were just simple lyrics, right? Even in the, uh, in the 1950s, you know, you ain't nothing but a hound dog, you know, right? C crying all the time. Came in uh, late last night, about half past 10. That gal of mine would let me in. Move it on over. Move over a big a little dog because the big dog's moving in. You know, he's in the dog house, right? I mean, th these are the type of lyrics they had. 
you know, or teach your children well, their parents' hell did slowly go by, you know, don't ever ask them why if they told you you would cry, just look at them and sigh and know they love you. That's about parents, you know, sometimes you get bad parents, just know that they still love you even though they're lousy parents. You know, those are the kind of lyrics. Now, you, you can't even listen to the lyrics because they're so disgusting, right? They are so filthy. And Fakhruddin al-Razi in his commentary says about the verse in the Quran where shaitan is, is, is threatened that you, know, that you will try to seduce them with your voice. He says by giving them foul lyrics that their children will memorize and repeat. That's in Mufatih al-Ghayb. That was in the 13th century. So what are we doing now? This is the khutuwat of shaitan. He's taken people by degrees. America used to be a, a, a relatively moral country. It used to have moral values. People used to go to church. They believed in God. They didn't use drugs by and large, right? I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Now you go there and one out of every four women has a, a venereal disease they can't get rid of. I'm not making this up. You can see the CDC research on this. Right? HPV virus, is a, it's a major problem in the United States causing cervical cancer, genital warts. These are real problems. And now they're promoting t sexual behaviors that are pathogenic. They're promoting pathogenic behaviors that, you know, we have, we, in America, you have all these advertising against saturated fats. You know, like a Big Mac is not going to kill you if you eat one of them. It'll do some damage, but it won't kill you, even if you ate a hundred of them. It's going to make you sick, but it's not going to kill you. But one time of rectal intercourse can be a death sentence. One time. And yet in America, they have all these ads warning people against saturated fats, and there's no ads warning them against deviant sexual behavior. Why is that? Because there are lobbies that say that that is hate speech. Why is that? It's not right. You should warn young people that you can get a venereal disease that you'll never get rid of. And as somebody who worked as an RN, somebody, I worked two years with a gastroenterologist. I saw firsthand the effects of rectal intercourse. And this is why it's prohibited for males on males or males on females. It's haram in our religion. It's not about homosexuality. It's simply about this sickness. Because if you do that, you will get very serious sicknesses. You will get, your sphincter loses its control. One of the things, a miracle of the Prophet, is he said that the people of Lut, they couldn't control their wind in their majalis. It's in the hadith that they used to pass wind because they lose the, the, the sphincter is no longer uh, doing its function because they've ruined the function by doing something that was never meant to be done. But they don't teach people this. They say, oh, it's normal, embrace yourself. The number of times an adolescent is exposed to explicit substance references, 35 per hour. They're listening to 2.5 hours a day, 35 per hour, 84 per day, 591 per week, being told about uh, alcohol and drugs in these lyrics. These are the khutuwat of shaitan. A long way from Puff the Magic Dragon, which they said was a, a 1950s song that was really about smoking marijuana. You know, puff the magic dragon, live by the sea, right? 30,700 a year. References to drug or alcohol in songs. Pop, 9%. Rock, 14%. Hip-hop, R&B hip-hop, 20%. Country, 36%. Rap, 77%. And we've got all these kids listening to rap. Now, uh, whoops. The effects of video gaming. This is one of the big plagues on, on our civilization. 
I'm talking about global civilization. This is a multi-billion dollar industry with massive resources and power now. This is incredibly harmful. It's addict, addict. People die from this. There was a Japanese boy who gamed until he had a heart attack. People die from this. It's true there are only a small number of people that are going to get addicted in that way. But this is what Islam is a rahmah to people. So it prohibits things that are harmful. Anybody who studied fiqh knows there's a section on bi'a. It's prohibited to sell alatul lahu. It's haram to sell games. You can make your own games, you know, like play games, children play games, rocks and stones. Little kids, they don't care what you give them. But to sell things and make money off lahu is prohibited in our sharia. Nobody talks about this anymore. They just think, oh, you can just go and, and do this and it doesn't matter. You know, this, this is what's happened to us because shaitan has taken us by steps. So if you look at these things, social isolation, drop in school performance, obesity, people that game are fatter than people that don't, wasting time, which is a great sin in our religion, to waste our time. It's sinful to waste time. Omar said, akrahu an ara ahadukum sabahlala. I hate to see one of you wasting his time. Imma fi dunyahu aw imma fi ukhrahu. Be doing something to benefit your dunya or something to benefit your akhirah. But don't just waste your time of no benefit. And people say, oh, but brother, this is good for dexterity skills. I want to be a surgeon and it actually teaches you eye-hand coordination. It's going to help me. You know, nice argument. Violent tendencies. We know this. Financial loss, decrease in empathy. You become less empathic. Average age of these players, 35 years old. What are you doing? <laughs> Seriously, 35 years old is the average. You know, I, I'll tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a confession, all right? This is a confession. And, and my wife will testify to this. When I first got back to the United States, and when I left, there were no computers. When I got back after 10 years being overseas, there were computers. All right. I actually met my wife. She, she taught me how to use the computer. So that's how I met. So I, I, I owe computers to that. So, but I, there was a game called Tetris. And I had never done this before. So I started playing it. And it, yeah, it was really interesting. And I was, oh, okay. And I, and I worked it out. And, and I, I, I don't even know how long I played it for. When I finished, I turned away and I was seeing those images come down. I, n I never did it again. And my wife would testify, I, have, I don't play any of those games. I've never played any of those games. I am against those games. They're evil games. And I really encourage you just to give them up and utilize your time. Learn a language. Go talk to the Orang Asli about Islam. You know, go, go, go clean up. Get like uh, volunteer groups that do uh, uh, litter pickup on your streets. You know, go, seriously, go do something useful. Go work out. You know, keep your body healthy. Go play soccer. Go visit your grandmother. Go to a, a, a hospital and visit people that aren't getting people visiting them. Do something useful, but don't waste your time uh, doing this. 49% are 18 to 49-year-olds. 25% less than 18-year-old. 26% are over 50 years old. So this is Ammat al-Balwa. Look at the physical fight. Gamers, 40% of females have been in a physical fight in America, 51% of males. Look at the non-gamers, 14% as opposed to 28%, you know, and they'll say, oh, but you can't prove any correlation, right? There's, you can't prove it. You don't need uh, a, a rocket scientist to, to just know the obvious. It's like the study they did in America to find out why pizzas burn people, the roof of their mouth, and then they found it's because the cheese covers the heat on the, on the tomato sauce, right, after spending a lot of money to work that out. You know, I mean, this is the kind of uh, stupidity uh, that, that, right? Poor grades. Females, almost 40%, 35% of the males, as opposed to 20% and 23%. No relationship, though, no correlation, can't prove it. 
damaged property, 15% of the gamers, 23%. This is people going out and damaging property. In other words, uh, delinquency. 5% of females, 10% of males, which is still high, I think. 89% of top-selling video games contain violent content. Half of it is of a serious nature. Highly criticized video game, Grand Theft Auto, which was actually developed by some criminals. They were real criminals, drug dealers. They came up with this idea. You get points by killing policemen. And then they wonder why all these, you know, uh, violence towards police, right? And then the police react. It, it's a two-way street in America. If you notice in a lot of these situations, they completely disregard the police. They don't do what they tell them. They say, you know, get on the ground. They don't get on the ground. It's a major problem. And the police use excessive force, especially against African Americans. It's a horrific situation that we have in the United States against poor people. You know, these police forces, and now they're giving them commando equipment. They look like they just got off the, the desert war, right? They have tanks in small towns in America. Shaitan gets you little by little, step by step. We used to have policemen that didn't carry guns in the United States. England used to have policemen, they didn't carry guns. They called them bobbies. You ask them a question. Right? Now they have Uzis or whatever they're using. They don't use Uzi. I don't know what their gun is, what their uh, weapon of mass destruction of choice is in England. The game grows 300 million in the United States by the end of 2002. Now we're in the billions. It was banned in Australia. Good for them. You know, good for the Aussies. Look at this industry. He takes you by steps. I mean, look, you, you're looking, this is 2008. It was 11, almost $12 billion. It's a lot of power. When you have that kind of money, you can buy judges, you can, you can lobby people, you can do immense things. This is, this is the, the world that we live in now that's been created. Just watch this scene. This is a game. This is a game that people play. See, I mean, don't let your kids Parents watch are going this. to buy children games like this. This is real. Kids underage play many games like this because when parents go to buy games, they don't check the age ratings. So this Christmas, when you go to buy a new Xbox game, check the age rating. Yeah, that, that's to me a lousy message. Don't go buy it. You know, that's the real message. Don't buy it. Forget the age rating. So now we're going to get into where this is all coming from. This is a book from the 15th century. It's a picture of the devil, you know, uh, and this is something, you know, Muslims used to sometimes depict things, Kitab al-Bulhan. But I want you to look at his hands. You see this sign? I, I don't even want to do it on film because people will take a clip and then have, have me in one of those pictures <laughs> doing that sign. It's an evil sign. We should, don't do these signs, right? And kids watch Spider-Man and then they want to do the sign because Spider-Man does it, right? And you don't want to be a Spider-Man. Right? You want to be a human man. Right? Not an arachnoid, a humanoid. These signs, even this one, which I don't like doing, but that sign, Muslims should not do that sign. That actually comes out of magic. These are signs that were, uh, they're, 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 they're magical signs. We have no symbols in our religion. Even this, the, the crescent and the moon, it's a Seljuk tradition. The Prophet ﷺ had no symbols in his religion. It's one of the miracles of our religion. We do things in cultures. This is urf, where you greet people. Even some of the ulama considered waving to be makru because they said it was ishara al nasara. And you see this in the books. I mean, that for me is a little extreme. I don't, I don't follow that. But that was my point is they were very cautious about these symbols because they know these symbols have meanings. This is why gangs do all these symbols. Right? Because this is demonic stuff. So that is a very important symbol. Now, this is one of, this is what they worship, these Satanists, uh, Baphomet. If you notice, he's androgynous, so it's a male-female mixture. 
also making these signs. You see the signs he's making using this sign because 11 is the devil's number. Because 11 is one beside one. And you will notice that in their numerology, they use 11 a lot. And they like multiples of 11. 11, 22, 33, 66. They like these multiples. Imam al-Ghazali says in their magic, they, they know the, the, the secrets of numbers. And so they use numbers. The, the Prophet ﷺ, when they used magic on him, they blew on 11 knots. Ihdashur uqda. And this is why the Mu'awidatain has 11 ayahs. Because it protects against their magic. So this is real stuff, people. I'm not making this up. This is real stuff. You either believe it or you, you don't. And if you don't, it's at your own peril. But this is real stuff. Sihr is a reality in the world. And people practice magic. And one of the practices is, is through the eyes, seducing the eyes in television and, and spectacle. It's the Sihr of the Ayyun. You can see Madonna imitating here Bofamed, right? Because she's one of them, and she's a numerologist. She is a numerologist. She practices numerology. This is Lady Gaga that everybody's Gaga about. People tell me, you know, oh, you've got a lot of followers on your uh, Twitter or something like that. I, I don't even know. I, I, I did Twitter one time and regretted it. Um, but... People said, and I said, to me, that means nothing. Lady Gaga's got tens of millions of followers. So the devil has plenty of followers on Twitter. It means nothing. We want to be on the account with God, right? We want to have the angels following us, pleased with us, happy about what we're doing. Now, Maleficent, you could see, see, Disney, they used to have films where the witch was evil and, and now they entice them. This is the fitna. They make a beautiful... See, they used to make them old hags. If you, if you see the old film, the witch was old hag, but we get them by degrees. Now they take somebody that many people consider a very beautiful woman and, and they put her in Bofamet's mask and then it becomes seductive. He takes people by degrees. I mean, what is this? Why are they doing this? Why are you wearing horns? We're human beings. We're not demons. And then you can see these signs. Why do they use these symbols? Now, this man over here, Leve, Anton Leve started the Church of Satan. He wrote a Satanic Bible. And he explained that that symbol that they're all doing, that you saw on the that Muslim graphic of the devil, that symbol, he said, was a curse symbol of, of devils. That's the way they put curses on people. Right? And you've got people at rock concerts, they're all doing it, thinking it's cool. Marilyn Manson was a follower of Anton LaVey. He has tens of thousands of people go to his rock concerts he has them openly denounce God, openly. He says, I want you all to reject God tonight. And they all do it. So this is real stuff, people. He's very committed to this. He takes it, he's a minister in the church of Satan. And they use music because music is fitna. It's enticing. It sucks you in. You like it. It's enjoyable. This is what he looked like when he was a little kid. And this is one of their symbols also. They use astrological symbols. This is him on stage. This was a cover of the Beatles because uh, John Lennon was heavily involved in magic. He was a follower of Aleister Crowley, who was a, 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 a magician uh, and, and, and ha has massive influence on, 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 uh, on Western civilization. He's one of these unknown influences. But they followed him. This is, they're in doctor's suits with abortion. They actually, the Warner Brothers was so disturbed by this that they covered it over. Now this has no shock value for people in the West. But in those days, it had shock value. But this was an album cover that they chose because they believed in free sex. Free sex necessitates abortions because people get unwanted pregnancies. Right? This is khutawat al-shaytan. 
That's how he takes people. That's why Allah says, وَبِرْوَارِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Right? Allah says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادِكُمْ خَشْيَةِ إِمْلَاقٍ Don't kill your children out of fear of poverty, but then, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الْفَوَاحِشِ Don't go near the fawahish that will make you want to kill your children. There they are doing these symbols. You see, and this is another symbol. Even though it means okay, it's actually a demonic symbol that represents 666. There you can see in the background doing the symbol, the Masonic hand. In the, This is a Masonic symbol. When you see them doing that, it's a pre-Masonic symbol. The number 23 in numerology is one of their numbers. Now look at this young girl, mashallah. So wholesome, this Disney girl, right? Look at her, just wholesome Disney girl, country singer, right? Hannah Montana. If you notice, they use also backwards, it's haram to recite the Quran backwards. This is well known because in magic, they recite things backwards. Alistair Crawley taught them to, to to learn how to talk backwards. John Lennon actually knew how to speak backwards. There, there's recordings of him speaking backwards. And they do backmasking on their albums where they actually play things in reverse. Led Zeppelin, followers of Aleister Crowley did this on one of their albums. So you're getting literally uh, magical messages. My, my, Hannah is, can be spelled either way, forward and backward, Hannah, right? Oprah. What's her production company's name? Harpo. So when you see these backward uh, things, you know you're dealing with people that are into this uh, magic. Now, here's Miley, right? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And this, with her little horn hair, right? What is this? The, she had millions of followers of little kids in America, and this is what she turned into. And if you look, you see, where did she get that? Kali, a demon from the Hindu tradition of destruction because this is a destroyer of the innocence of youth. She, she has literally, she's possessed by Kali. And she couldn't stop putting her tongue out. She was even asked, why do you do that? She said, I just, I feel compelled to do it because this is, this is who's really moving things around, Kali. A demon. And we believe in demonic possession, people. One direction. Let's go crazy, crazy, crazy till we see the sun. I, only, I know we only met. I mean, look at this. I only know, know we only met, but let's pretend it's love. And never, never, never stop for anyone, meaning your parents or God. Whoa, 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 whoa. That should be whoa, like slow down. But it's not. It's tonight, let's get some. Okay, and, and most of you, I don't know if you have these idioms in Malay English, but in American English, that is a very clear idiom about, I, I don't think I need to say anything. So let's pretend it's love. In other words, it's lust, but let's pretend it's love and just get some. This is promoting free sexuality. And, they, and don't think that they put that Muslim in there by accident or because he was talented. They knew exactly what they were doing. Zayn Malik is a minion of these people. This is a simple fact and a reality. And I'll say it openly and publicly. This is being live streamed. People can make fun of me. They can laugh at me. They can think I'm crazy. They said the same thing about the Prophet ﷺ, so I'm not ashamed of being called Majnoon. If they could say it about the best of creation, then who am I to reject that honorific title from the people it comes from? Channeling, the act or practice of serving as a medium through which a spirit purportedly communicates with living persons. That's the definition of channeling. A lot of these actors believe in channeling. So they actually invoke spirits. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley MacLaine.
when people ask me, who is my role model in this business, I say you, Jack. I think why you're my role model has to do with the way you relate to vanity, or the lack of it. I mean, I have to tell you, I just adore the fact that you don't care how you look. <laughs> I adore how you commit to the part, you don't care about your little bald spots, you don't care about your stomach. Remember that wonderful stomach. <laughs> you don't care about your wrinkles. This is all extremely important to me. Doing a love scene with, with, with Jack Nicholson is absolute middle-aged bliss. I mean, to lie in bed and rehearse a love scene, it's so funny, it's so spontaneous, it's so open. We're lying in bed and we're rehearsing the astronaut Garrett Reed love scene. He's explaining to Aurora what it was like to walk on the moon. She's loving it. And then we launched into the first take and two voices came out of you. Do you remember this? Two voices, and they were, they were simultaneous words, but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you. You were amazed. I was amazed, and you said, well, sure. Sure, oh, I'm, I'm many different people. <laughs> I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. So I'm many different people. That's literally what... The devil says in the New Testament, when he's asked what his name is, he says, my name is Legion. Right? A lot of different names. Two tones coming out, two voices at the same time. That's clear. He, they, go, they do what's called method acting, where they invoke. Crowley said the quickest way to invoke a spirit is through acting. So they do a method technique, and they stay in character for the entire film. Jack Nicholson, in some films, scared people because he would play psychopaths. And he would stay in character even when the filming wasn't being filmed. And it was like he was possessed, because that's what they do. Heath Ledger, who played the Joker, and, and, and that had previously been played by Jack Nicholson, when he was killed, they, asked, they told Jack Nicholson and, and asked him what he thought. He said, I warned him about that role. That's what he had to say. So this is, this is Anton LaVey. The birth of TV was a magical event foreshadowing its satanic significance. TV's infiltration has been so gradual. You see, khutuat, it goes slowly, so gradual, so complete, that no one even noticed. So people, 50 years ago, you couldn't have shown the violence. It's gradual, but now it's happened. People say, what happened? It was slow. It took time. Shaitan has he has till Yom Qiyama. Amvirni, give me time. And Allah said, You have till Yom Qiyama. And He said, I'm going to get them all. I'll get them all. He has time. He's slow. He works slow. He works at you slowly. Shaitan takes his time. People don't need to go to church anymore. They get their morality plays from television and the movies. That's what teaches them morality. Many of you already read my writings indicating that TV is the new God. There is a little thing I neglected to mention up till now. T television is the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. Anton LaVey wrote this. Now, this is a man who had several actors and actresses that were his followers. They were literally his followers. So he's not talking as some kind of marginalized, this is somebody who had influence in Hollywood. And one of his followers had a heavy influence on many of the major directors in the United States. Dajalic culture. I'm going to warn you about the Dajjal. No prophet except he warned his people. I'm going to tell you something. No prophet said it before him. He has one eye. He doesn't have one eye. You're God. This God has one eye. Why is there so much one eye symbolism amongst these entertainers? 
have you ever seen anybody when you, you take a picture and he says, hold on, hold on. I've never seen any normal person do that. Why do they do this? Because this is their religion. They worship the, the, the one-eyed God. Horus, he's called in Crawley's mythology. Why are they preparing our children for one-eyed characters? Why? Why? The minions. They're actually called the minions in this film. Why are they doing this? Why do they all do these one-eyes? What, what's going on? Why are all their symbols with one eye? What's happening? And then the pyramid, because they believe in a pharaonic structure. They believe in an elite, and then everybody else, the masses that just follow them and do what they tell them. And this is Crowley doing the 11. That's the 11. And there's uh, his, one of his minions saying, do what thou wilt, because that was Crowley brought a book that he said was given to him by a spirit in Egypt, and it's called the Book of the Law, and he said the only law is do whatever you want. There's no more rules. And this has always been what the elite have done. Now it's they're letting the masses have the law of the elite. This is what the elite have done. They don't believe in morality. And this is the occultic nature. This is what the uh, Hashashin they didn't believe in morality. You, they had nine degrees. When you got to the highest degree, they told you the Sharia is a myth in order to keep people in control. Religion is just a control mechanism. They don't believe in religion. They just use it to control the masses. But now, it's end game. Shaitan's coming out. So, we don't need religion anymore. Why do they call this dark messiah? This is a game. And why does dark messiah, which is messiah, it's the Messiah al Muslim. Why does this dark Messiah have one eye? Who's inspiring them? They might not know what they're doing, but Shaitan is inspiring them to do this because he's preparing people. And if you look at the dress, people used to dress modestly. All of the actors are cross dressers now. They put them in, and the Prophet said, don't dress, men should not dress like men, uh, like women, and women should not dress like men. He said that you don't do that. Men should dress like men and women like women because we believe in essences. There's a female essence and a male. They don't. They believe in androgyny, that everybody's male, female were mixed and you should explore all aspects of your personality. This is what they believe. And so they have cross-dressers, right? And these are the minions that they have. That, that carry on this work. This is one of the most destructive uh, aspects that shaitan now has. This destroys families. It destroys your heart. It will, it will put out your inner eye. You will not be able to have any spiritual experiences. Your heart will become like that mujahiyan, what the Prophet said, a, a vessel that can't carry any good. Illa ma ushiriba min hawahu. Because this is all hawa. And porne. In, 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 in Greek, means prostitute. One of the tribulations is the faces of prostitutes. People that Allah, there are people that are punished by giving them the tribulation of looking at the faces of prostitutes. And this is basically, anybody who's in these films is a prostitute. Male or female, they're selling their bodies. Look at the stats, people. Look at the Muslim countries. This is the searches per capita. Look at looks what's happening to us. And then you're wondering why we're being, you know, why this punishment is coming down on us. What are, what's happening to our people? How has Shaitan been able to do this? Because we forgot. We left all the pr protection. We left the awrad. We left the, 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 the wird of the Quran. The ahraz that the Prophet gave us to say every morning. And evening, we're supposed to say these things. There's evil in the world. You're supposed to seek protection from it. We're supposed to protect ourselves, guard our hearts. This thing is a precious thing. It was created to know Allah. It wasn't created for these things. And Islam is a pure religion. The Muslims that migrated to, out of India called it Pakistan. The land of pure, purity. Muslims are supposed to be pak. They're supposed to be tayyib. 
The Prophet said, this, is, this will corrupt the heart. It will make it aswad mirbad. Black. Internet websites, 4.2 million. 12% of total websites. Pornographic pages, 372 million. These are sound stats. Daily pornographic search engine requests 68 million. 25% of total search engine requests. What's happening to us as a species? Daily pornographic emails, 2.5 billion. 8% of total emails. What's happening to us? Food, junk food now, they know. They have proven. Junk food is addictive. And the more junk food you eat, the less inclined you are to eat healthy food. Any restaurant that you recognize the name, don't eat there. And I'm sorry for the people that have the McDonald's uh, wakala in this country. I'm against fast food. Muslims have their own fast food, you know, like falafel and shawarma. We have our own fast foods. And you have the fast foods in, in, in Malay. Eat your own foods. Eat healthy food. Don't eat this junk food. This food is made in factories by chemists to get you addicted. They use rats and they see how much sugar and fat they need to put in. Just like tobacco, it, it, people get addicted to it. They, they can't stop. So avoid any of these restaurants. Look at these poor children. It's, it's a crime against our children to feed them this junk. Allah always says with halal, tayyib, always. Ha now we know the meaning of that because at the time of the Prophet, if the food was pure. They interpreted it to be economic to not buy it with haram money. But now we understand another dimension of it. And you, uh, uh, zaman yufassir al-Qur'an, like Ibn Umar said, time is what interprets the Qur'an. Now we get to where we're at. Signs of the end of time. Ibn Mas'ud said, I said to the Prophet, هل لِسَّعَةِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ تُعْرَفُ بِهِ Does the hour have a knowledge that you can know it by. He said, Naam, ya Ibn Mas'ud. And this is a science that our ulama need to reestablish. Jibreel taught four things. There's not three aspects of Islam, there are four. People say Islam, Iman, Ihsan. But Hadith Jibreel has alamat as sa And Muslims have to know these signs. So they recognize them when they see them. And there are many signs. One of the signs, Yakun al Wadadu Ghaidha. Children become filled with rage. Rain becomes burning or acidic, acid rain. You'll see evil people spreading widely. People will trust treacherous people and they will consider trustworthy people treacherous. When you sadaq al kadhib, when you kadhib al sadiq, the truthful one will be called a liar and the one telling the, a lie will be called truthful. These are signs. Ya Ibn Mas'ud, inna min alama sa'ati wa asharatiha an tuwasil al-atbaqu wa an tuqta' al-arham. This to me is one of the clear prophetic miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. Because I believe that the atbaq, and you know in Algeria, what do they call the dish? Tabaq. They call the satellite dish in North Africa atbaq. And that is a correct ta'rib. In the East, they call them suhoon or dishat. They call them suhoon, and that's an incorrect hadith because a sahan is a flat dish. The tabak is a, is, a, is a concave dish. And so atbaq is the correct meaning. And the Prophet used the very word that's used for satellite communications, muwasalat. He said, tuwasal al atbaq, that the, the dishes will be communicating continuously and people will sever their family ties. In other words, people will stay home and watch television on satellite dish and they won't go visit their neighbors. This is an amazing hadith to me. Ya Ibn Mas'ud, min a'lam as-sa'ati wa asharatiya, an yasood kullu qabiratan munafiquha. You will see hypocrites ruling. Wa kullu suqin fujjar, wa kullu suqin fujjaruha. And you will see the worst people controlling the marketplaces. Ya Ibn Mas'ud, in min a'lam as-sa'ati wa asharatiya, an tuzakhraf al-maharib, wa an tukharb al-qulub. That, that the, 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 you will have ornamented mosques, but the hearts would be uh, ugly. They'll be derelict, bereft. 
So people praying in the mosque, they've done no tazkiyah, but the mosque is beautiful. Ya ibn Mas'ud in min alama sa'ati wa sharatiha an yakun al-mu'minu fil qabirati adhalla min al-naqd. The mu'min will be more humiliated than the ugly goat. Like nothing. Ya ibn Mas'ud in min alama sa'ati wa sharatiha an yaktafi al-rijalu bil-rijal. You will see homosexuality and lesbianism widespread. Wake up, people. This is our prophet speaking. And he said, you will see Mirka Subyan, young people having massive wealth. Like Zuckerberg is a multi-billionaire before he was 30. And you, and, and, and you will see Mu'amaratun Nisa. You'll see the, uh, the, 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 these, these, uh, movements to corrupt the women. Ya ibn Mas'ud in min asharati sa'ati wa alamiha an yu'ammar kharabu dunya wa yukharrabu umranuha or imranuha. You will see the destruction of civilization. You will see the civilization of, of the destruction of the world. So, kharabu dunya, that will become the, the ta'mir. It's tadmir. People will, like blowing up mosques. This is the khilafa. The, the Abbasids built those mosques, and now the new khilafa, quote unquote, is blowing them up. So, you're seeing the umran of kharab. This is their civilization. This is what they have to offer. And you will see the, the destruction of real civilization. Ya ibn Mas'ud in min alama sa'ati wa sharatiha an tadhhar al ma'azib that musical instruments will be widespread and and alcohol and drums ya ibn Mas'ud in min alama sa'ati wa sharat in he said that min asharat a sharat you'll see many uh, police and also al ghammazun al lammazun people mocking and making fun now look at all the tv shows where they just mock people Ya ibn Mas'ud in min alama sa'ati wa sharatiha an yakthur awladu zina. You will see many children born out of wedlock. In my country now, over 50%. Amazing. Tu'arad al fitnu ala al qulub kal hasir. Now I want to interpret this hadith. Hasir is a mattress, or I, uh, sorry, a mat. It's a matrix. It's like this it, it, it has vertical and horizontal, and it's, it's a mat. And, and the Prophet said that the fitin will be shown to the hearts like a, a, a mat. Udan Udan. The, the Ud is like one of the, you know, the, it has two lines, a horizontal and vertical line. Any heart that drinks it will become white. I already did that. But if you look now, this is the TV set. You see, it's a hasir. This is, the, this is the set. It's a hasir. It's a mat. And the Prophet said, the fitin will be shown to the hearts like a mat. Kal hasir. Udan, udan. You see, they have a ud. These are called idan. Any Arab would call that idan. And this is what the Prophet said. This is, I believe, this is my interpretation, but the al-lugha uh, the, the, the Arabic language bears this meaning, and that's why I believe it's a valid interpretation. This is, a, this is the ud. The idan of the television. And this is how shaitan is destroying the hearts by showing them the fitan on these films and on TV over and over again until people just become accustomed to violence. It's a normal thing. They're not shocked by it anymore. Qara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sinfani min ahl al-nar lam arahuma Qawmun ma'ahum siyatun ka adhnaab al-baqar You will see people with whips like 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 cow tails, they'll hit people with it. When he saw unkasiyatun ariyat, women that were clothed and naked at the same time, ma'ilat, they'll sway in their walk, mumilat, and cause others to incline towards them. Ru'usuhunna ka'asnimat al Ya Allah, sadaqa Rasulullah. He said their hair would be like the Bactrian camel's hair. This is not a camel the Arabs had. On, they came from Persia, so they saw them. They knew what they were. These people will not enter paradise. And here's the Bactrian camel. 
Wallahi say sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. He said, people will drink intoxicants from my ummah and call it by other names. Right? They'll have lots of names for it. Yu'zifu ala ru'usihim bil ma'azir. Musical instruments will be on their heads. How did he know about that? That's what it says. I didn't make that up. It says they'll have ma'azif ala ru'usihim ma'azif. On their heads are musical instruments. Who would have thought, that, who would have known what that meant at the time of our Prophet ﷺ? But now we see it, all these people everywhere. And here's, here's the iPod. You know, it's not I am a pod. You know, a pod is, is the, per, it, you know, you have invasion of the body snatchers. They take over your body. A pod takes over your body. They took out the verb to be. They just say iPod. Because you're not being anymore. You're a shadow of your former self. Your mind is filled with their thoughts. You're not even yourself anymore. You're, you're listening to Rihanna or, or, or Madonna or Haifa Wahbi or whoever the latest uh, fashionable singer is. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Allahumma ballak. Allahumma ballak. Allahumma ballak. Don't follow his, he'll take you by degrees. He'll take Malaysia by degrees, just like he's taken all these other countries. He's taken them. They're all in fitna. They're all killing each other. The only one's happy about this is Iblis. He's happy about Syria. He's happy about Egypt. He's happy about Libya. He's happy about Yemen. He's so happy. He, he wrote the happy song. Really, he wrote that song. Like a roof without a like a house without a roof. He took the roof off Darul Islam. We have no protection. The storm comes, there's no protection. Now there's no roof because the satellite goes through the roof. So it's beamed into your house. You don't have the protection of your home anymore. What did the Ashab al Kahf do? They fled to the cave. Right? And that will protect you from the Dajjal. Be in your cave. Guard yourself against these things. Your home is Darul Islam. Guard your home. Protect your home. Don't invite shaitan in. Protect your children. They're pure. They're innocent. Look at them. They're just, they're beautiful. They're, they're ready to, to, to learn La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah by fitrah. They'll believe what you tell them. But if you put them in front of these things, they'll stop believing. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallahu khairan, Shaykh Hamza Yusuf, for a beautiful speech, for a beautiful presentation. May Allah make this in the scale of your hasanat and the scale of each and every one of us here. Just to wrap up, inshallah, with dua, so please do not miss the dua, inshallah. Um, there is a great book that I'm sure Shaykh, uh, inshallah, have definitely read it. It's by an Imam Abdul Rahman ibn al Jawzi called Talbisu Iblis. It is available, alhamdulillah, in English, The Devil's Deception. It's a very good book to, to read about the subject, insha'Allah. I would like to end with a dua. Allahumma rabbana taqabbal minna hadha al-dars waj'alhu fi mizani hasanatina ajma'in. Allahumma gfil lana warhamna wa'afina wa'afu anna wa akrim nuzulana ya arhaman rahimin ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'ah وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وزدنا فهما وزدنا حكمة وزدنا تطبيقا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين 
والحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you very much for coming. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.